after a two-game winning streak on the road, the Lake Orion Dragons come home tonight to welcome in the Troy Colts. It's the home opener, and we've got it all for you here on Orion Neighborhood Television and the NFHS streaming service. Good evening, everyone. I'm Doug Corliss, joined tonight by the former Lake Orion quarterback, former Michigan State Spartan and jack of all trades, Kevin McCormick. And Kev, the Dragons had some questions coming in, lost a lot in graduation. They go to beat a very good Northville team. Last week they beat Stony Creek. They haven't missed a step. Yeah, no, they've looked good the first two weeks of the year. And like you said, that first week against Northville, tough game on the road to open up the year, and they took care of business there. And then again, on the road at Stony Creek, and Coach Bell was saying Stony Creek had some guys on that team, and they still were able to go in there, blow, blow them out. And now that you come back home, home opener, start off the home, uh, home season with a good note. Troy comes in on paper, because they're coming up from the blue division to play one of the premier teams in the OAA. But Troy started out with wins over Bloomfield Hills and Pontiac. They have a very senior laden roster. They're not a walkover, and this should be a good game tonight. It should be, yeah. And in past years, like when I played, usually Troy was usually a rollover game. But again, again, they have a, they have a lot of seniors on their team, which is which can kind of make it somewhat like a trap game. And especially with Oxford coming up next week for the Dragons, this could be kind of a lookover game for them if they don't, you know, if they don't take care of the tiny things and you know just hit every note as as they should. Yeah. In the OAA, it's early. We know that league yeah, schedules yeah. start tonight. In the red, Lake Orion and Adams sit at 2-0. and Everybody else is 1-1. One and one. Grove sits alone at 2-0 and in the white. And Seaholm, Farmington, and the Troy team we see tonight are all on top, are all tied in the blue. But as I said, it's early. Give it a couple weeks, and it's all going to blow apart. Exactly. It's tough to kind of, you know, gauge how teams are when you play these games that are non-league games just because you don't really know who's good and who's bad yet, you know, because even though there's the red, the white, the blue, everybody's good, especially especially in Oakland County, everybody's good. So it's going to be very interesting to see how both these teams match up. Should be a good one tonight. The Troy Colts make their first visit back to Dragon Stadium since probably 1999 or 2000. Should be a good one. We've got it all for you. Stay with us. Pre-game was underwritten by Sarah Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram of Lake Orion, part of the Sarah Automotive family, featuring new and used vehicles, a full service department, accessories, and a state-of-the-art body shop. Give them a call at 248-393-2222 or stop by at 3800 South Lapeer Road in Lake Orion. Just before kickoff, the Lake Orion Dragons and the Troy Colts. Lake Orion is coached by head coach Chris Bell. He is in a whole bunch of seasons. Got a state title to his name. We all know his story. Troy is led by head coach Chris Frazier. He's in his seventh year. He's 29 and 30 overall in the regular season and one and four in the playoffs talking with Coach Frazier before the game. He played at Troy under legendary Troy coach Gary Griffith, and he said that he looks at Coach Griffith like his mentor and has really turned this program around. They had some lean years before he took over. The Dragons are in the tunnel, and the Dragons take the field.
as we alluded to in the pregame last week, the Lake Orion Dragons beat Stony Creek and former defensive coordinator here, Rick Powell. And they opened up with a statement win over Northville. Yeah, no, yeah, the, the first two games were very impressive, especially their week one dub versus Norfolk, who wasn't wasn't any slouch. That was, a, that was a good team that they went on the road. You know, obviously week one is, it's kind of a mixed bag, especially with the team who lost a lot of seniors as LO did. Um, it was good to see them come out and handle business then and then get to roll over to week two. It was a very impressive win against Stoner Creek, who's not a bad team by any means. This quarter is underwritten by Jets Pizza. Jets Pizza with two convenient locations in the Orion area. Proud supporters of Orion Neighborhood Television since 2009. Give them a call or visit JetsPizza.com. Players are lining up. The band is on the field. So I'll tell you, we were talking, there's no place you'd rather be than oh, yeah. up here on a Friday night. Nice breeze, not too hot, not too cold. Yeah. Public address announcer Roger Smith introducing the band. And now we will pause for the playing of our national anthem. All veterans, we encourage you to render the appropriate salute. And everyone who's able, please stand at attention. Place your hand over your heart as we proudly sing our national anthem. Welcome to the podium, Lake Orion High School Band's co-director, Caitlin Shanks, as she leads the Dragon Marching Band in the Star Spangled Banner. crew for tonight. The referee is Wally Rose. Chris Curtis is the headlinesman. Matt McLaughlin is the line judge. Dave Dungy is the umpire. Matt McLaughlin is the back judge. I'm sorry, Mike McLaughlin is the back judge. Mike Sn Snobler is the field judge and Noah McLaughlin is the side judge. And family crew out there for the it referee. Is. <laughs> Talking with the referee Wally Rose, I said you better watch your back. They're going <laughs> to take over for you. Lake Orion won the toss and deferred. So Troy will receive They'll be going left to right across your television screen. Will Hoffman will tee it up on the 40. It's funny, usually, you know, teams have a guy who looks like a kicker, but Hoffman, I mean, he's listed as linebacker, kicker, and 
punter, so he's doing he's doing everything, but he's you know he's just a you know he's not necessarily a specialist only as they say. So we haven't seen him play too much linebacker in his time here. They, I noticed Will's got a pair of iridescent green gloves. It's yeah. a ni nice touch. Let everybody know he is he is the man. Back deep for Troy is number 13, Evan Barsaic, and number one, Jalen Peacock. Will approaches, bouncing kick, taken by one of the up men at the 10 yard line, and he is brought down. That's number 20, Cole Aury, co captain, and they will, Troy will take over first and 10 from their own 22 yard line. Good chance for Olo to make a statement here on this first drive. Whenever you defer and you decide to kick first, you can really kind of get ahead of the game if you can get a stop here and force that, force your opponent to go at least three and out, at least give the ball back without scoring up, without scoring any points. And Will Hoffman has already proved me wrong because he's out there he's out right there. outside linebacker. There he is. From the eye formation, from a pistol formation, the quarterback is number zero, Noah Alry. Looks, throws too high, intended for Greg Tester. Yeah, that was an RPO right there, ran from Troy. And he made the he made the right read. Ari did. He, he made he made the right read right there. He just, just had to throw it over some guys and ended up being a high pass. Good, good start from a low defense here on first down. Austin Kahn was in coverage. It's second and ten. Glad you're with us here on a beautiful Friday night in Lake Orion. Not much wind. The flag is pretty much hanging limp up in the northeast corner. Ori from the gun, back looks, throws. Too low for Kung Leon. Yeah, another uh, another play action play right there from the Colts. And Ari had his man. I mean, that was the first down. And he just threw that one in the dirt right there. So a tough throw. And now he brings up third and long for Troy. And after two failed passing attempts, now you, now you have to basically throw the ball here. And after those first two plays, I'm not sure what else. What else Ari has in stock for him right here? And I'm sure that is not the way that Coach Frazier wanted to start. So third and long, trips to the left. Now motion that side to make four wides. Empty backfield. I know oh, the field. Yeah, yeah off the field. That's so we have... Start. Left tackle mood right there for yep. Troy. Uh, they went hard count. Lucas Tick, senior, 6'4", 275 over there on the end. So that'll back them up five. It'll make it third and 15. The ball will be marked on the 17 yard line. Now we'll see if that maybe changes the play call at all for Troy. Third and long, you're backed up in your own territory here. You don't want to make them a, don't want to make a mistake. I wouldn't be surprised to see maybe a draw, maybe a little screen here, something short, something that's kind of low risk, high reward if it does work out for him here. Five wides, trips to the left, twins to the right. Empty backfield for Ori on third and 15. Fades back. He's going to run. He's going to stop, throws deep. That's going to be P.I., yeah. That's going to be pass interference. Pass interference all day on that one. Grady Harbin had coverage. He didn't need to run into him because he had pretty good position. Yeah, and that was that was an underthrown ball right there from Ari. I mean, granted, the, the receiver did have a step on the DB right there, but it was an underthrown ball, and that's, those are always the worst pass interference calls. Now, that's going to only be a 15-yard penalty. Yeah, thankfully it's not a yeah. spot foul here in high school, but nonetheless, after a third and long, it was third and 15, and that just yeah. gave him the first down right there. But those those underthrown pass interference are always the worst because you don't want to feels wrong kind of rewarding the QB for making a bad throw. But then again, the DB didn't even turn his head around at all to look for the ball. So that's, that's really where, the, where the, that flag was thrown. Moves it up to the 37-yard line where it's first and 10. Oh, now they're going to readjust it. Bring it up to the 32-yard line, yeah, and it'll yeah. be first and 10. Yeah, but they're on their own 17, I believe, before that flag, so 32 does make sense right there. 
Wide out either, or twins to the right. Handoff up the middle for about two. Number six, J.P. Number six, J.P. Makarowicz on the carry. Bought down by Hensley. It'll be second and eight. Yeah, that was the first run play of the of the series right there for Troy. It goes for three, it's just a little simple inside zone right there. Nothing too fancy. It's kind of what you're gonna get on this first drive. Kind of gonna get plays to feel out the defense to see kind of what works best. Backs in an offset eye from the gun. Or oh, he's got pressure. And incomplete intended for Johnny Fon. And it'll be third down and eight. Yeah, Peyton McIntyre, number 45 right there on your screen. He got in there. And really good job by that LO defense. They didn't rush up field. They just stayed level on the line of scrimmage. Didn't, again, didn't rush up field and really just didn't let the quarterback either cut back or get around the outside. And now... Once again here, third and long for Troy. Another third down situation. Last third down, LO ran a two high set. Looks like they might be doing the same here. They come out trips right. Looks like they're playing press here. Single back in the backfield. Bring pressure. pressure. Got it away and caught to number five, Kung Lian. That'll be a first down into Lake Orion territory at the 48. Yeah, the Dragons brought the heat right there on third long as they should, and Hoffman actually came in there untouched, unblocked. He wasn't wasn't touched by anybody on that cold offensive line, but very good read right there by or by Auri to get to get that ball out quick, got out to his receiver in space, Kung Lian, and now they have a first and ten in plus territory. Double wide, double slot, look for the Colts on first down. Handoff up the middle goes absolutely nowhere. Maybe a yard loss. Yeah, I think he may have lost about a half yard right there. Johnny Fan on the carry. They're going to give him a loss of about a half. Now they're marked right at the stick. It'll be second down and 10. Not surprised to see this rushing defense being pretty stout here for this Dragon defense. They stay in a double wide, double slot. Looks like the D line jumped right there for LL, but, didn't, but yeah, but they didn't they didn't break the neutral zone right there, which is why the flag wasn't thrown. Yeah, they tried to give them a hard count. And the Dragons jumped but didn't bite. Ori back. Pressure coming again. Looks, throws, incomplete. Intended for Leon and just let him a little too far and threw it out of bounds. Yeah, this game is going to be won at the line of scrimmage, and right now Ello's doing a very good job of getting penetration, especially on pass plays. And that one again, Hoffman was in there to just, you know, even if you don't get the sack, just getting a simple pressure on the QB to force him to, to get flush and, you know, roll outside the pocket. That's what you want. And Leon, he was open right there, but again, just a tough throw for Ari to try, try to throw that to the sideline and fit it to where only his receiver could get it. So it's third down and 10. Offset eye. Ari's from the gun. Big heat again. Back. Throws, caught. Nice catch by number two, Jackson Barrett. He climbed the ladder, went up, and got it. Yeah, that's when we just had to kind of tip your hat right there. That was a good throw from Ari in the, in the sense that he threw that really only his receiver could gra grab that. He had to throw that over a drag, and I believe he threw it over Alex Hensley. And a really good grab right there from the receiver, brings it down. And once again, they have another third and long conversion. Ball's marked on the 35, first and 10. Twins right, single wide left, backs in an offset eye. Handoff to J.P. Makarowicz, and he goes absolutely nowhere. Lane Garris got in and got him, yeah, playing rinse. that nose tackle position. Wash, rinse, and repeat for this LO defense. Another first down stop on the run. This one they actually do lose yards on. 
But again, it's second and long here, and the Dragons have done good on first and second down, but it's that third and long yep. that they seem to be struggling with. As soon as that ball goes in the air, they seem to struggle. It looks like they might be passing the ball again here with an empty set. Trips right, twins left. Empty backfield. A motion this side. Ori back. Trying to rush it, and he is downed after no gain. Yeah, that was really good awareness right there from that Dragon defense, not letting Aury kind of start to use his legs there. He rolled out left, felt flush, but very good pursuit by the Dragons right there. So third down and 10. We're inside 8.30 to go here in the first. No score. And again, we caught back to that, that third and long. And last few times, the Dragons have brought heat on third and long. We'll see if maybe they kind of maybe show a blitz and back off, or maybe... It looks like now they might be running, looks like what to be, could be a possible cover three here. Possibly even the cover four if I'm looking at this right. So they got one linebacker in there. And a one couple of strong yeah. They bring heat again. Ori back, got pressure, looks, throws incomplete over the head of J.P. Makarowicz, and it's fourth down. Yeah, interesting play call from Troy right there. After the past few times on third and long, they've had success throwing it up the field. They tried a little trickery. They had the quarterback roll up right and throw it back on the screen, and the pressure kind of forced an air throw right there from Howard. He threw it over the head of his receiver, but I'm not sure he would have gotten much after that because there was a dragon in the area. And it looks like we have a timeout here on the field. It's like taken by Troy. Yep, Troy. We'll finish our opening read. The first quarter is also written, underwritten, by Orion Oaks Dental, where the number one priority is to deliver quality care to their patients in a comfortable and convenient setting. Located at 400 West Clarkston Road in Lake Orion. Visit their website at www.orionoaksdental.com or give them a call at 248-693-4444. And our scoreboard for the first half is underwritten by Michigan United Credit Union. Michigan United Credit Union, the full service financial institution, serves everyone who resides, works, worships, or attends school in Michigan. Give them a call at 248 814 4000 or visit their website at michiganunitedcu.org for more information. And now we have another time out here. This now they're going to go Orion. for it. And Lake Orion was ready for a punt, so now they call a timeout. And replays for this game are sponsored by Jets Pizza. Jets Pizza with two convenient locations in the Orion area. Proud supporters of Orion Neighborhood Television since 2009. For more information or to order dinner tonight, it's not too late. Visit JetsPizza.com. Yeah, I'd like to get myself some Jets tonight after this game. Did you miss it down in the van? I think I did, yeah. yeah Kyle McLaughlin and the crew at Jets Pizza at M24 and Clarkston Road in Lake Orion cater for our crew here. And Kyle, thanks a lot for everything you do for us. They've been an underwriter of Orion Neighborhood Television and our broadcast for years. Looks like they are going for it here. At least they're lining up for it. Maybe they maybe pooch punt this, but fourth and long here. They've had mm -hmm. success with the passing game, so it's not a surprise to bring the offense back out here. Trips right, single wide left. Ori back, looks, throws, caught, complete first down. Down inside the 25. To the 24 goes Jalen Peacock. He just found a hole in the zone and sat down and waited. We do have a flag, though, back around where the quarterback threw the ball. Yep. L.O. is signaling this one's coming back. And it's a hole. It's going to be a hole. Wow. And we say the Dragons brought heat, which is why, you know, you might be sitting there on your on your couch think, thinking, you know, why are all these passing lanes open? And, and it's... Solely, be, it's solely because the Dragons are bringing heat, which leaves the middle of the field wide open. 
They're trying to get to the quarterback before he actually makes that throw. But at that time, the heat was just too much for that Cole O-line. Draws the holding, and the Dragon just really dodged a bullet right there. Yeah, number 74, DJ Jamison got caught. Now they're going to punt. Jackson, oh, oh terrible punt it. off the side of his foot. Poison. And it takes a Lake Orion bounce up to the 48-yard line. And Doug, the crazy thing about that is wow. that that's technically a negative punt because the line scrimmage was yeah. at like the 44, and that ball's placed that looks like the 47. So that was technically a negative three-yard punt. And that's something you're taught from day one. Watch yourself kick the ball. And I'll tell you, he just took his eye off it. He his did. head was up before he kicked it. Because so, he, had, he had time because the Dragons yeah. played kind of a safe punt right there. They, they, didn't, they didn't bring the heat probably not to you know risk getting a – roughing the punter. So here come the Dragons, T.R. Hill. Brings them, brings them out. Jaden Barrero is at one running back spot. Vasquez in motion. T.R. on the carry, up over midfield, down to near the 49 yard line. Yeah, so the Dragons kind of run, you know, shades of the old Coach Bell, that little jet sweep yep. action, but they're kind of adding more to it. Before it was under center, they ran the straight jet sweep, but it looks like now they're running, they're still running that jet sweep, but they're running a little bit of a power read off it, and T.R. Hill, it, it looks like he, he kept the ball in well, that one game three, so. And he can run it. Exactly. And that's that's the difference with some of the, you've got to have a quarterback can run, and we've seen him for three years, and he's not afraid to tuck it and go. Second down and seven. Yeah, it's gonna be a false start. And that's center, gonna be a yep. false start. Everybody moved except the, the center. center. Yep. Everybody's on the same page. So that'll back them up five. And the market at the 46. It'll be second down and 12. Yeah, so that kind of that kind of negates any gain T.R. Hill had on that first mm. run. So now it kind of changes the play calling just a tad bit here for Coach Bell. Kyle England split wide right. A little trap action. Vasquez breaks a tackle, gets over midfield, gets a penalty yardage back. Plus, yep. it's going to be a third down and six. Yeah, they, from the 47. They ran a fake jet sweep right and then ran the trap back off the end of him. That's that's just a classic LO staple right there. We ran that when I was playing. And it's if, it's one of those plays where if you hit it right, you can hit a big game. Yeah. If, if you don't block it right or the defense has the right alignment, uh, it can really get blown up in the backfield. But a solid gain here makes it a little bit more of a manageable third down. And if you don't get it on third down, do you possibly go for it on fourth down here? So. Ryan Rochelo sets up at a tight end on the right. And Lake Orion's going to take another timeout. That's two for him here in this first quarter. Wow. Interesting. We'll see. Yeah, he had to have seen something. Coach Bell had to have seen something he didn't like. Yeah. Yeah, you know, obviously being a player myself, and you know, there are times where, you know, to the fan it might look like everything's okay, but down the field, you know, they obviously have the correspondence. They know exactly what's going on, so. Maybe they didn't have the right guys out there, didn't have the right alignment, maybe had too many guys out there. But nonetheless, yeah, that's a, that's a second timeout burn here for LO in this first quarter. And it's only the first half, so, you know, obviously they'll get three, fr three fresh ones to begin the second half. But nonetheless, you know, you do want to have at least two in your back pocket here down the stretch of the first half. Travis Acker. Comes in, sets up as a fullback in front of Jaden Barrero. Vasquez and Jamari Cooper are split left on third down. Vasquez in motion. TR up the middle. Moves the pile. Did he get it? According to the official on this side, they have it. Yeah, it looks like a near official had him. Looks like they kind of get. And it's first down, Dragons. We're up here from our angle. We're a little off angle of that first down marker. It looked yeah. like he may have gave him a generous spot, but four progression plays in T.R. Hill's favor right there. And 
Yeah, when the head linesman came in, he looked like he was about a, a yard back. Yeah. But the, the line judge came in. Toss back, Jamari Cooper, trying to get cut the corner. He gets about five. Give him six on a nice sweep around the right side. And again, <laughs> shades of the old Coach Bell Storm running that rocket action at heart right there. And that was that was a classic rocket. They had the had the line overloaded to the right side of the right side of the set. And a decent first down cane here, makes it about second and five. So second down and five. Twins right, single wide left. TR up the gut. First down and more inside the 30. Down to the 28. As they get a replay of that last one. Again, TR Hill just going up the middle right there, putting his shoulder down. And again, we've talked about this before, but you know, having a quarterback that can run really adds a dimension to your offense that Coach Bell or Coach Blastock as well hasn't really had before. And they're using it all to their best ability here. And make no mistake, T.R. Hill's a tough football player. He is. That Jamari Cooper coming around the left side gets a couple. You know, that play didn't go for a lot, but Jamari Cooper just knew, you know, knew what his knew what his job was. Didn't didn't have a chance to hit a big play, but put his foot in the ground, cut up field, and just got as many yards as he could. It makes about a second and six here. So smart, smart play right there for Cooper. Cooper and Vasquez in the slots. Rochelo and Kyle England split out wide. Handoff to Jaden Barrero. Gets a couple. It's going to be third down and five. They're calling it four, so so will we. It's third down and four. Yeah, they're kind of in that no man's land where it's too close to punt, maybe too far for a field goal. So if you don't get it here on third down, would not be surprised to see them go for it here on fourth down if they don't get it here on third. From the gun, trips right, single wide left. TR back, looks, throws, caught, first down. Let's see what they mark him, that judge on the far oh, side. Oh, it's gonna be close. It's gonna be really close, it might be a measurement here. Jamari Cooper had to reach back for it. Yeah, it was an out route there, and TR Hill had pressure in his face, had to throw that quicker than he wanted to. And it looks like they are gonna mark him about half a yard short. It looks like TR Hill is- And they're gonna go for it. It looks like TR Hill came over to get the play directly from Coach Bill, so we'll see what they draw up here. They, they, they use his legs twice so far in this drive. We'll see if they do it again here. Maybe the little QB uh, The old full house backfield. Yep. Hand off. First down, Dragons. Yeah, I believe he got it, yep. Great second effort from Barrero. He was in initially, Absolutely. yeah, he was touched behind the line of scrimmage there. The little second effort, using his legs to chop his feet. I believe it got him the first down. And it is going to be a first down. Good play from Barrero right there. Yes, it was. And that's where... That's where, you know, those summer trainings in the weight room, that's that's where it comes to play right there because that was all power to get that first down right there. Go back to a spread. Rochelo and Cooper split left. Vasquez and England split right. TR under center. Handoff. Quick hitter up the middle by Barrero. Barrero. Got about three. You know, and Dragons taking their time. They're not trying to rush up field. They're just, you know, just kind of just getting three to four yards to pop. Second down and six. So they're calling it second and six. Vasquez That's trying to get the there. corner. Turns it up here, breaks a tackle. Touchdown, Lake Orion Dragons. What a run. Jackson Vasquez never gave up on the carry. Hopefully we can get a replay on that one, but what a run right there from Vasquez. 
It looked like he may have, you know, maybe would have had the first down, but he just wouldn't go down. He just, he just kept those kept those feet churning kept right there. The feet moving. So Will Hoffman comes out. Vasquez will hold. Bobbled the snap. It's Vasquez. Cut it up field, did not get in. He just bobbled the snap. Yeah, that was And yeah, kind of ha- throws off all the timing. So, and that, you know, call fire and, and run for it. Now here's a replay here of that run. And again, Vasquez, he, he, he thought he was down right here, but he just kind of pushed everybody else over, keeps his feet in bounds. That was that was the one where I was surprised. He kept that heel up, yes, did step out of bounds, but it looked like he, you know, he got the blocking out there, and the Troy guys were kind of just tackling themselves out there, and he was just kind of like, all right, I'll just kind of step over everybody here and kept his feet going. Fifty-two yards in eleven plays. Again, that was the true just paper cutting you up and down the field because you know they wanted to go yeah. fifty-two yards, but they still took up eleven plays, a lot of clock too. So that was a classic ground and pound drive right there from Lake Orion. Will Hoffman will kick off. <clears throat> was up end over end kick into the end zone. Yeah, his, uh, his his first kick was was a squib kick, but that one that was a that was a boomer right there. So <clears throat> Troy will take over first and ten from the twenty, a minute thirty nine to go here in the first. Dragons are out to a six to nothing lead. Let's we'll see what defensive changes Lake Orion makes here after. Their rush defense is really good on that first opening drive for Troy. But the pass defense was really what was in question. But again, when you bring the heat a lot, you leave the middle of the field wide open, which is where Troy was hitting all their passes was across the middle of the field, throwing to where the defense left. To uh, give our producer director, Joey Tysick a heads up, I'm going to try to do a quick read after this play. Pass out on the left flat, caught, and about a five-yard gain. A sophomore out there, Teddy Moore, the third, 5'8", yeah. 170, neon gloves out there. A little tunnel screen. That's a decent first play to kind of get the blood going again for yeah. Troy. Second and five. Hand off up the middle gets maybe a yard. While they reset the ball, we will remind you, go mobile with Orion Neighborhood Television anytime. Follow us on Facebook, X, and YouTube on your mobile devices. Con- connect with ONTV to see what's happening in our studio, see upcoming events, and watch ONTV programs in high definition on demand. Orion Neighborhood Television, bringing Lake Orion to the world. All right, so we got about 35 seconds here or so in this first quarter. Probably, be, unless it's an incomplete pass, it'll probably be the first or last play of the first quarter here. Third and three, and Will Hoffman jumped. So that's going to give him a first down with 28.2 seconds to go in the first. That's a smart, smart choice right there from Troy to. Run the hard count there. You got third and three, yep. third and four. You know, try to see if you can maybe get get a free first down. And you know, Elo has jumped a few times without drawing a penalty, but that time, yeah, Hoffman he just got a little too giddy right there and encroached the neutral zone, and that gives Troy a first down here. So, and we'll see if maybe they just wind down this first quarter. And yeah, I, th- I think they will. They got ten, 10 seconds, seconds here. They'll see if they actually run anything. Trips to the right. Single wide left, and they do. Up the middle, goes nowhere. Yard loss. Number 29, Anthony Pirano, got stoned. 
That's the end of the first quarter. The Lake Orion Dragons lead the Detroit Colts six to nothing. Thanks to Orient Neighborhood Television and Dragon Broadcasting, you can watch LOHS Sports live online all year. We've got a full schedule of varsity football, volleyball, and more this fall, plus concerts and ceremonies. It costs less than $12 per month to watch sporting events, and half of that money goes back to the LOHS program. Be sure to designate Lake Orion High School when you set up your account. Get started at www.dragonbroadcasting.org. Owen TV thanks our student crews for their hard work and dedication to bringing Dragon Sports to the world. They have a t-shirt cannon down on the track. They worked on that for years when I was in school. Yeah. Until they finally got it to work for them. Yeah, and they're blowing t-shirts all over. Here goes one. Good one. Not going to come this far. No. That is amazing. So Troy is facing a second and 10 from their own 32 as we start the second quarter. Twins right, single wide left. Ori back, got pressure, looks, throws. That's going to be P.I. again, I think. No. No, they don't call it. Good, good coverage by Alex Hensley. Yeah, that was another. That was another. They tried that earlier on their first drive. They had the quarterback roll out right, and they tried to throw it back left. And that time he had he had his man. He had J.P. Markowitz out there, and he had it. You know, that was a good mismatch because it was a linebacker out there. Yeah, that was uh, Alex Hensley. And Hensley never really never turned looked around. back. Yeah, he never looked back for the ball. Luckily, he arrived there just as the ball did, didn't draw the pass interference, so they lived the fight another day. Now, but again, third and long is where the Dragons have struggled here on defense. Double wide, double slot. Single back is Johnny Fan. Ori back, looks, throws, caught. Short of the first down. It's going to be about a yard short and will bring up fourth down. Yeah, good job by the Dragon defense there to corral and that one get the first down. And now, it's funny, it's fourth and short. This is probably where you want to be if you're this Dragon defense, considering that you haven't been able to stop the pass at all today, but the run defense has been pretty stout. Fourth and one, Ori. And I, I don't, I don't. I think, think they're going to give it to him. Yeah, they are. Yeah, it's like he he, re he reached out the ball at the very end. Yeah. And, and he, before that whistle blew, yeah, referee marked the first down. That's a tough run right there from from Ari. So first and ten for Troy. They ran hurry up after that third down. Didn't really let the dragon defense get the personnel they wanted out there for that fourth and short and it worked out for him and good spatial awareness right there from Ori to reach that ball over and get the first down so if he didn't reach that ball over I'm not sure he would have gotten there double wide double slot on first down Ori from the gun back look got pressure coming oh my goodness they got him well Alex Hensley got absolutely mugged in, in Troy's call, backfield. Yeah. You get a re replay of that there. Good pocket presence right there. Right here. Yeah. He's taken down. But good pocket presence there from Ori. It gets that ball out, finds, finds his receiver out there. Makarowicz. And now it's second short here for this Troy offense. One of the first few times they've had a second and short. Yes, yeah, second and two. And he's not going to get it. Handoff up the middle to Makarowicz, and he didn't get it. All right, another third and short here, and this is really four down territory, so really good. you got to find a way to not give up basically half yard in two downs. They've done a, again, the run defense has been very, very good for LO so far. So third and one. 
Give me a sneak. Corey up the middle. He's got the first down. Yep, score progression. Yeah, a little bit more. By after about that. it. Yeah, he, he was held up and just as we say, kept the feet churning, got another yard out of it. So first and 10 from the Lake Orion, 46. And they are making Troy work. Yeah, Troy, they're, they're keeping the chains going, but they, they, it's, it's, taken, it's taken a while. I mean, they've, they've already wasted about three and a half minutes on the clock, and they've only gone about probably yeah. 20 Troy, yards from where they started the drive at. Troy started out the game throwing the ball, and since then they've just gone to a ground game, and they've gained some yardage. Double wide, double slot on first down. Motion this side. Brought down in the backfield was Johnny Fan. I'm credit McIntyre with that yeah. tackle, but again, as he comes off the field, but. And that's the way it goes. The guy makes a big play, what's the first thing they do? They pull him out. Pull him out. <laughs> So second and scoreboard still says second and 10, but they lost about a half yard on the play. Trips left, twins right on second down. Ori back, looking, throwing, complete and brought down after about four yards was was Makarowicz. Yeah, Dragons have brought heat for most of this most of this game on defense. That one, they actually only rushed four. Yeah. They, they dropped their guys back in coverage on that one and ends up being good for them. They only allow about four yards on that one. So now it's about third and medium here for Troy. And, and yeah, and I can, you know, I'm probably beating a dead horse here, but it's probably four down territory. So I wouldn't expect this, I wouldn't be surprised to see maybe a, you know a play to set up a fourth down, fourth down play if they perhaps try to run the ball here. But again, they've had a lot of success airing the ball out so far. Johnny Fan in it running back alongside Ori, and we have a stoppage of play. Let's see if they call. There is up. Dead ball. Delay, Delay game. game. Wow. Yeah, now there's really no excuse for a delay game because now that at least here at LO, they have the play clock in the corners of the yeah. end zone. So it's it definitely shouldn't be hard for that QB to see. A, a lot depends how fast how fast the play gets in from the sideline. Exactly. So now it's third and 11 from the 47. Yeah, okay, we'll see if the Dragons bring heat here if they lay back. Trips right, single wide left. Ori back, got no pressure, down he goes. Ball's free, ball's out there. Ryan Rochelo came in from his defensive end position and just obliterated Ori. Yeah, nobody touch Rochelo on that one. He came in unblocked. When you get a replay of that one, you see Look yeah, at that. the halfback was supposed to get him. Yep. That was supposed to be number three, uh, Johnny Fan, and he just missed his assignment. He yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, he missed his assignment. Rochelo came in unblocked, and that's one where Ari has to just look at his guy and be like, what are you doing, man? So Vasquez is back in punt to receive the punt of number 10, Omar Atasi. This is a better punt right End here. over end punt. He's on the hop. Jackson from the 20 up to 25 over the 30 and down at the 31 yard line. Good return. We got a flag here at midfield and these are always interesting when it comes on special teams. You never know who was really on. I don't think Elo had anybody in there to maybe hit the punt or anything. No. So. This is, a, this is probably most likely going to be holding. It's just going to be a matter of who it's on, whether it was on Troy trying to could stop. Be, could be a hold on the outside return man. Yeah, he's holding himself. Yeah, he's talking to Troy, finding out what they want to do. 
Holding up by Don. Uh, holding on Troy. Holding on Troy. So I believe here it's going to be 10 yards the end of the run. Or, or they can like to all re -kick. depends if it was a pre or post kick. If yeah. it's pre kick, well, yeah. Coach Bell doesn't look too happy. I think he wanted to take him back 10 yards and have him kick again. Especially with how, you know, iffy the punter has been for Troy. Could wind yourself up in some good field position if you like to re kick and see what they Let's see what do they're here. doing. If it's a spot foul, it would be. Well, Forwell first, Whoop. he signaled towards Troy. Yes, he did. And then now, when he was actually announcing it, he announced back towards Lake Orion. So maybe that's. It's not easy being on the field. It is not. It is not at all. So now. Maybe that's why Coach Bell was upset. Maybe because it was. Oh, now they call it Lake Orion. Okay. So they'll mark it off 10 yards from the 32, 31. And I think that's what Coach Bell was upset about is first they called it against Troy. So the ball should be marked on the 21 yard line. That's exactly where they'll mark it. Where so. Lake Orion will take over first and 10 with 6.29 to go here in the second quarter. This is a key drive here for Lake Orion. You got six and a half minutes to go in the first half. And based on how their first drive went, took them 11 plays to go 50 yards. Now you got to go essentially 80 yards for a touchdown yep. here. In theory, they could eat up the rest of this clock here in this first half and then get the ball back to start the third quarter, so. TR brings him out, Rochelo splits wide to the left. Anglin and Vasquez in the slot right. Handoff up the middle. Jaden Barrero for eight, call it seven. Solid run there on first down. Sure was. We get a look at that one again. That was, looks like a good, good hole through the middle, and he just broke a tackle yeah, when he got into the second level. Looked like a power right there. They had one of the big guys that they had, Brennan Eliason. He was he was running in there trying to lead block for him. Barrero did a good job on that first down run. Again, clock is ticking here under six minutes ago here in this first half. Dragons will get the ball to start the second half. TR on the carry, tries to cut it outside. Got a first down at the 33. Patient Clock will run. stop to reset the chains. Patient run right there from TR Hill. Didn't have the exact opening that he wanted, but again, he only needed about three or four yards, and he knew that he knew he knew where he needed to get. And he was patient, let the block develop there, and then got the first down. That's a sign of a three-year quarterback. Exactly. From the gun. Handoff. Around the left side, Guerrero is close enough. They're going to mark him back at the 41. So it'll be second down and two. Another power read right there from Coach Bell. He's liking that type of east-west motion, forcing the defense to be the one to, you know, to make the read there, and a good read right there from T.R. Hill to hand that ball off and let Barrero go run around the outside. And on second and two, this opens your playbook up a lot. Exactly. Back under center here. TR back, look, going deep, got, got Vasquez. Oh, oh, right through his hands. Oh my goodness. And pay, pay attention to that play. You're going to see it again before the night's over. I was wondering when they were going to have him throw the ball deep, that being TR Hill. And that time, it was a perfect play call. I mean, Vasquez was wide open. The ball maybe, maybe was a little bit to the outside, but. Nonetheless, that's something that Vasquez has to bring in. Again, a tough catch when trying to trap the ball like yep. that. It's kind of over your shoulder. 
maybe you, you could say Tier Hill could have put that a little far out in front, but again, that's one that Vasquez has to bring in. But again, it was second short here, so the drive is not over by any means. Trips to the right. Ball's dropped. TR's breaking it, and he's, and he's still on his feet. And down after about a six-yard loss, we do have a flag on the far side about the 35-yard line. And after I just said the drive wasn't over, it completely started to snowball after on, the, on that play. It was a, yeah. it, it looked like Tier Hill kind of mishandled the snap, and that messed up the timing. It looks like I wouldn't be surprised if they get a holding call here. It's usually, usually what you get on those cutback plays. Troy's waving to the north. We'll listen to referee Wally Rose. Yeah, he's trying to get this cut back. Black in the back. Number 15, yeah. he said. I'm trying to read his mouth right there. He looks like he said number 15. AJ Leitz. Fourth down. Fourth down. Yeah, smart play, so. Yep. They will decline the penalty, which again would force LO to have a fourth down here, and that's exactly what they're going to do. And just as I said, you know, the drive wasn't over after that drop catch from Vasquez. That's something that, you're, that they're going to look, look back and film. But look, yep. you know, we could possibly be up by two possessions here if you haul that pass in. And now you're giving the ball back to a Troy offense that has not it's not gone away. Oh, good nice point. kick by Will. Takes a Lake Orion bounce. Good Troy Pacmara. Troy Pakmara caught him from behind and dropped him on the 17-yard line. That was a very, very good punt right there. And it was, it was returned on the bounce by Jalen Peacock as we get a replay of that. As Peacock, he grabs it on the bounce, but Pakmara. Look, look at Trey, just extends and brought him down. And that's where they always say, wrapping the hamstrings. And that's exactly what he did. That's something that Coach Blackstock would always emphasize a lot on is wrapping the hamstrings. That's exactly what he did, and it's no surprise, especially with Pac Mayer being the DB. Coach Blackhawk and Coach Heath, Coach Jeff Heath. Yeah, good to see the Jeff Heath on Yeah, staff. no, it's not a surprise to see the DBs tackling well. Three wide outs. Okay. Again, good tackle. That was Leeds in on that AJ one. AJ Leeds. Yep. Just submarined him. A little John action right there. Looks like from... Hello's very own, looks like Alex Hensley and for Troy Harwood, they're kind of jawing back and forth on that one after that play, a little extracurricular activity. I don't know what they can jaw about. <laughs> yeah. I know we're late with a couple reads, Joey. I'll get them as soon as we can. So now clock here, about so two and a half to go. Second and eight. Trips left, single wide right. Ball's tipped in the air. It'll be third down and eight. Well, like that was kind of a double deflection. These two guys were in there. I believe it was Rochelo. Lane Garris was in there. Yeah, looks like Rochelo was in there as well. They both jumped up, batted that ball down, and. Third and long here, again, this is where you want to put an offense, but based on how this game has gone so far, third and long has really been the dragon defense's kryptonite. That hmm. middle of the field has really been kind of where Ari's been making his bread and butter work in terms of the passing game. They got five defensive backs in, one linebacker. Yeah, looks like they're running kind of a 4 2 5 here. Five man front. Yeah, looks like kind of a 4 2 5, maybe a 3 3 5. Looks, throws, caught. No, he dropped it. Separated from the ball. Good hit by A.J. Leitz. The receiver went up to get it, and A.J. was there to knock it out. I thought he already was across the line of scrimmage, but he wasn't. Got the ball off, but good play right there from A.J. Yeah. Leitz. He hit that arm of the receiver that was exposed and batted that ball away for forced the ball out. And that was a key stop because, again, that passing game is something that has been kind of leaky all day for this LO defense. But now they're going to get a chance to get the ball back here. 2.20 to go, one timeout. Vasquez sets up on the 48-yard line of Troy. 
Long time getting that kickoff. Fair catch called for and made on the 42. 20 basket. And if Omar Atasi keeps taking that much time to get a punt off. I'm saying there's almost a guy in there that was almost was able to get a hand on that for LO. Yeah. 20 basket as he caught that one. That's probably one of the toughest yeah. catches to make on that return. Orion Neighborhood Television will be celebrating Community Media Day on October 21st. Community Media Day is an annual celebration of voices that bring awareness to the importance of free speech and accessible media for all individuals to have their voices heard. Orion Neighborhood Television is inviting anyone to our open house from 5 to 8 p.m. and I'll finish after this play as we have twins right. They might have to take a timeout here. And, and Rochelle, exactly. and yep. they are. And that's their last timeout of the half. Yeah. Coach Bell he wasn't happy with how they were lining up. There's some confusion up there. And so to finish my read, Orion Neighborhood Television is inviting, is inviting anyone to our open house from 5 to 8 p.m. with snacks and refreshments to see what we have to offer the community. We are also inviting nonprofit organizations to record a quick PSA if they would like throughout the day from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. I'll be there. Yeah. Community television has been a part of Lake Orion now for 39 years, and it seems like just yesterday we started. They had an empty set here with T.R. Hill alone in the backfield. First down, trips right, single wide left. T.R. rolling right. Looks, tucks it. Got to tuck that ball in if he's going to run. He was kind of yeah, holding out there a little down. bit. He was kind of holding yeah. like a loaf of bread out there. I, when I played, I did the same exact thing. I held the ball out there, you know. It looks cool, but not not always the most safe on that one. But he was able to keep the ball outside, st stiff arm the man, and, you know, was able to make something out of nothing right there. Looks like they, they called him out of bounds when the clock will stop here at 2.08. Gain of four, it'll be second and six. So second and six, TR up the middle, breaks a tackle. That time he had that Close ball to the in. first down. Let's see where they, they're gonna short. mark him about a half a yard short. So we get a replay of that run, look at QB draw right there. And again, he has that ball tucked in high and tight and didn't get the first down, but got pretty close. Yep. And now do the third and one. It's third and one. Guerrero in as the running back. Got a little pistol set right here for him. Travis Ackers and up back. Up the middle, first down and more. Yeah, it looks like Barrera a little gimpy on that after that one. Yeah. And now he's, now he's down, he's holding his, looks like his left ankle. Oh, no, okay, it looks like he's cramping. Okay, yeah, he's, yep. he's cramping, okay. Yeah, he's holding that calf. <laughs> yeah, there they, okay. Yep. It's, yep. it's the first game of the, first home game of the year. It's still the middle of September, and while we have this injury timeout, for nearly 75 years, the Orion Area Chamber of Commerce has been dedicated to creating a healthy local economy and building a strong environment for economic growth and stability. They, present, they represent business to the government, coordinate educational forums, host networking events, and advocate for business-friendly legislations and promote community. The Chamber is a 501c6 nonprofit organization funded through Chamber membership investments, sponsors, and fundraisers. Follow them on Facebook or visit their website, orionareachamber.com. 
Yeah, it looks like Barrero was able to walk off the field on his own power. You know, we've said it before, this time of year, you start hydrating on Tuesday. Oh, yeah, Friday yeah, that's game. exactly what Coach uh, Blasta he used to always say. You start, yeah, got to hydrate starting in the middle of the we've week. We've said that for years. Trips to the right, single left, single wide right. TR looks, throws, got it. Strong Receiver. Throw, strong catch. Jamari Cooper caught it in traffic, took a hit, and hung on. That's a tough catch right there, going across the middle of the field. You know you're going to get hit. You know you're going to feel some some type of foot set right there. A good a good pass right there from Hill. He rolled out right, felt the pressure, and threw a little sidearm pass right Look there. But the, the concentration that takes, because you know you're going to get unloaded on. TR looks, throws, oh. broken up. Intended for Jamari Cooper. They were trying to have him finish the job right there. Yes, that, that, that was a tight window right there for Hill. He fit it in there, but a better play from the, from the linebacker, I believe that is, for Troy, number 25. Looks like Cameron Adams. He came in there, ripped that ball out. Very good play from that Colt defense. Second and 10. TR breaking it outside. Uh, they did not call a horse collar on him. And that, that looked close to be a horse collar. He had collar, him one. right around the back of the neck. Good pocket presence. He may have had a guy open across the middle right there. It yeah. was Vasquez. He, he didn't see him. Look at, that was close. Oh, yes, it was. Yeah, that was. Anything around the nameplate, they're supposed to call it. Yeah, but he had Vasquez on the la on the latter end of that of that run. But by at that point, he had already started to roll out. Didn't really see him. And that's always a dangerous throw when you're rolling out right, throwing across your body like that. So, probably the safer play just to take the yards you can, especially this close to the end zone here. Don't want to take any chances, but they they can get a first down here without getting a touchdown. Anderson Adams is in at quarterback, and he's going to go down after a loss. Yeah, I don't know if something happened to T.R. Hill. Talking to the coaches in pregame, they say, watch out for this young man. He is going to be, well, he's going to, T.R.'s a, a senior, so he is the quarterback of the future. Yeah, uh, looks like they're going to bring out. Will's, Will's coming out for a field goal yeah. attempt. 47.3 seconds left. Holding on Braden Blackstock. Yeah, it looks like and TR. If that name sounds familiar, it should. I'm looking at the sideline here. It looks like TR Hill is on the on the table, so we'll keep an eye on that one. I'm not sure what they're looking at they're to his upper body. So. Yeah. So Will Hoffman from 28 yards. Vasquez holding, falls down, kicks up, and the kick is go. good. 41.3 seconds left. The Dragons increase their lead to nine to nothing. Hey, filmmakers, be ready. The Wildwood Film Festival will be kicking off on Thursday, October 17th at the ONTV studio located at 1349 Joslin Road. Teams will be given their requirements, which include a prop, location, and a line of dialogue that is to be included in their 10-minute film. You will have until 6 p.m. on Tuesday, October 22nd, to submit your film. On Wednesday, the 23rd, the films will be viewed and judged at 7 p.m. at the Oxford 7 Cinema in Oxford. Open to all ages, it costs $30 per team to enter, and the winners will receive a cash prize. To register, go to www.orionontv.org or call 248-393-1060. Uh-oh. And... That's not what you want to do before the end of that. Jalen Peacock took the kickoff <laughs> into Lake Orion territory at the Lake Orion 45-yard line. Yeah, that was a 
That was a good return. The, the, the gunner out there just didn't, just didn't contain. Peacock didn't do anything special. He ran outside, and, and yeah, there's just... I think Coach Blackstock is in control of the special teams, but just maybe a hold right there too. But he always said, you know, if you're if you're that outside man, you were supposed to be that containment. Stay in your lane, and someone didn't stay in their lane out there. Yeah, Wesley Pratt didn't have the best angle on him. So first and ten, they come out trips left, twins right, empty backfield for Ori. Back, looks, throws, oh. incomplete. And he got, he took a shot right he there. He got planted by A.J. Leet. I believe, it, I believe it was Hensley in there on that hit. And he, Hensley? He, yeah, it was Hensley in there looking at the middle linebacker. And it looks like now that receiver is going to be coming out. Johnny Fan, he's coming out. He, he got his bell rung. He was on the ground for you a little at, longer there. You looked at 35. I looked at 15. <laughs> yeah, you know, Hensley, so second Hensley, he's down. Wearing, uh, he's wearing that little neck brace. So it's easy to spot him out. Again, trips left, twins right. From the gun, Ori back. Got time, looks, throws. Dangerous pass, but he got it there. to Jalen Peacock. Looks like a timeout taken here by Troy. Brought down by Grady Harbin. That is... Troy's second timeout. They have one left. Dragons are out of timeouts. They have 23.7 seconds to go. Yeah, and again, the passing game has been really what's been working for this Troy offense. So we'll see what happens, but I'm, again, I'm looking down at the sideline here trying to take a peek into T.R. Hill. He, he has a yeah. sling on that left arm. It's something sums up with his left shoulder, yeah, left he arm. Does. His helmet's off. He has a sling on that left arm. So he, I, don't, I, don't, I doubt we'll see him the rest of the night. That's always the that's always the danger you run when you have a quarterback who is mobile as he is. You yeah. run you run into that thing of you know how much do you really want to let him run because you could get him injured. Hopefully trainers are talking to him. Yeah, hopefully he's all right. Hopefully it's not a serious injury, but he does have a sling on that left arm, mm -hmm. so we'll, that's probably the last we'll see of T.R. Hill tonight. Double wide, double slot. Ori rolling right, looks, throws toward the end zone, caught. Inside the five, 17.1 seconds to go. Complete to number 29, Anthony Pirano. Yeah, he rolled out right, just threw, threw the line out there. It wasn't the prettiest ball, but nobody was really on him. It was AJ Lights out there. and Good, good job of catching the ball and coming down with his feet. Oh, that was... That was number one, Jalen Peacock. Getting, keeping his feet in down, doing that toe tap. 17.1 seconds to go. First and 10 from the four. Ori, incomplete. He had pressure from Will Hoffman and Rochelon. Yeah, good again. Good penetration. We have a flag in the play here. Let's see what they see what they call here. Legal shift. The legal shift, so that'll be five yards. That's a key play right there for that dragon defense. They needed that one. Especially that, with that'll repeat first down. Yeah. But at least I think at this point the downs you have left aren't really big of a fat point. 13 and a half seconds ago. Yeah. It's gonna be more so. Can you force Troy to waste some time with that clock? Now they're back just inside the 10 at the nine yard line. So And as we said, Lake Orion will get the ball to start the second half. They're coming out trips left, twins right, Orion an empty backfield. On Ori looking, cuts it upfield, and still on his feet. Still on his still feet, going. breaking tackles. They're gonna mark him out of bounds, though, right around the three, it looks like. But he wasted a lot of time on the clock. He got four yeah, and a half did. second left. A tough run from him. He's a 6'2", 200 pound quarterback. Yeah, he's a big fella. Yeah. You see there, Dragon just couldn't bring him down. The, they just could not wrap the hamstring. Still, just nope, they were not. They they did not wrap up. Yeah. 
It, it looked like first guy had a crack at him was the ball Alex is, Hensley. The ball is marked on the two with 4.5 seconds left. And Troy does have a timeout remaining here, so they can run the football. They haven't had a lot of success with it all day, but you only need two yards. But again, everything gets condensed down here inside the 10, which plays the Dragons' favor here. Hey, this would be a crucial stop to hold Troy to possibly only three here on this drive. Four wides. Ori back, looks, throws the corner That's of the end zone. zone. Yeah. Out of bounds. And, and is that the end? We'll see. Yeah, they're gonna put it. Oh. Yeah, they're gonna, they're gonna put about a second on that yeah. clock. Elo Faithful don't like that one, but that is the right call because that ball was well out of bounds. Right. Um, when that when that clock was. That now they put going. two seconds on. Yeah, I think that play took a little bit longer than two, but again, it won't matter. This will be the last oh, play. There we go, half a second. Yeah, I'm saying this, this will be the last play of yeah. the of the half, no matter what. So here we go. Third down and goal from the two. And they're trying a field goal. Atasi in. Looks like somebody moved on that they right did. side. Yeah, and there moved. it is. They're going to be a, a false start. And they're going to move them back five. And that's key, especially in high school football. Every yard matters when it comes to these kicks. And But in a way, this might actually favor Troy because they're on that... You're on that far hash mark, and yeah, that, that, that's a tough angle. When, well, you're, when you're that close with the high school hash mark being so wide, that, that is a tough kick, especially if you're a right-footed kicker trying to cross your body like yeah. that. Yeah. So it happened, you know, and it looks like they will take the yard. So this honestly might make it a little bit more of an easier kick for Troy's kicker, number 10, Omar Atasi. It'll be spotted from the... Placed on the 15, so it'll be a 25-yard attempt. A half a second to go. Another guy jumped. Well, let's Ooh. see who they call it on. False start. They'll move it back again. Well, make it about a 30-yard. So 30 this yarder. will be marked as a 30-yard attempt. Now, at what point, if you're Troy, you say, screw it, just throw the offense back out there. You can't get your guys to stay still here on, on, on the kick. So now, again, this makes the angle a little bit a little bit better for the kicker, but it's farther mm -hmm. away now. So definitely has the leg for it, but it's going to be a little bit more of an accuracy thing here. Falls down. Kick is up. And he missed it. He hooked it. And the kick is no good. The Dragon defense... Holds at the end. We've played a half. The Lake Orion Dragons lead the Troy Colts 9 to nothing. You're watching exclusive coverage of Lake Orion Dragon football on Orion Neighborhood Television and the NFHS streaming service. We'll be right back.
to the game team. The game team begins their competition season on November 17th. There's an event here at Victorian High School. They're also holding their annual youth clinic on Sunday, September 27th. And today is the last day to register. You can sign up your elementary age child through the dance team's social media. Look for Lake Orion Dance Team Program on Facebook or on Instagram. They are LO Dance Program. We now like to recognize our youth league and middle school football team. Part of the Lake Orion football family and tradition has been our youth league and middle school teams. Over the years, countless parents have volunteered their time in one role or another along with the coaches who lead the teams. And for all who have done so much for the kids in our program, we thank you. Let's first meet our teams standing on the 20 on the north end of the field. From the Progressive Tackle Football League, please welcome the black team led by Coach Andy Berrigan. At the 25 yard line. The PTFL Blue Squad, head coach James Gentry. Next is one of the PTFL Gray Team, and head coach AJ Cabrera. From the youth football program, the JV Black Team, and coach Chris Brown. Now please welcome the JV Gray Team, led by Joe Hargrove. The middle school seventh grade green team and coach Jerry Richmond. Standing at midfield, the eighth graders, the middle school green squad, and coach Darren Eaton. Also at midfield, the eighth grade white team, and coach Jamie Witt. Next up, the 7th grade white squad. Their head coach is Stephen Emery. At the 40, the youth football JV green, green players. Head coach, George Thomas. Now, please welcome J.D. Graves and his youth football JV white team. And at the 30, from the progressive tackle program, welcome Kent. Clippers and his green team. Next, the PTFL Red Squad, led by Rocco Rogan. And at the Southern 20, the PTFL White Team and head coach, Jason Kabaki. Congratulations, players, parents, and coaches on being Orient Talk and a part of our Lake Orion Dragons football family. Best of luck to all of you in your seasons. Go Dragons! Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the field of the 2024 Lakorian Dragon Marching Band. Oh. 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 The oh. Oh. from the direction of Michael Steele and Caitlin Chance. Assistance from Dylan Hyman. Last season, the Dragons finished in third place in the state at the state finals of Ford Field. And the band begins their competitive season this fall tomorrow at the Band of America Regional in Toledo at the University of Toledo's Glass Bowl Stadium. Today, the band will perform the first parts of their competition show entitled Fade to White. The show features Eleanor Rigby by the Beatles, Gone Away by the Oxtreme, and Don't You Forget About Me by the Simple Vines. Pro majors Sam Tadeo, Walter Thompson, Kyle Kirkland, and Willis Abel. The field is yours.
understand time. We must feel time. The feeling of what is endless before us and limited in front of us.
It's halftime. The Lake Orion Dragons lead the Troy Colts nine to nothing. I'm Doug Corliss. To my right is Kevin McCormick. And Kevin, it was a back and forth first half, but the thing that really changed the whole scope of this game was the injury to T.R. Hill. Yeah, it was it was that play that we were talking about where it looked like a horse collar tackle, they didn't call it, and I was more worried. On a horse collar tackles, you really got to be worried about, you know, are their legs getting tangled up? Are they falling weird on, on their you know knee, ankle, and all that stuff? And he looked fine when he got up. He didn't really get up that slow, um, but he came over to the sideline immediately after that play, and they were tending to his left shoulder. Don't want to speculate anything, but um, he did get taken out on a stretcher to uh, the ambulance in the did have a sling on his left arm. So based on how the tackle went, I'm going to assume it's probably like a, a separation of some sort. And he, did, he didn't fall in weird. I don't think it's a collarbone injury. Um, I'm assuming it's going to be something got something popped out of place on that yeah. one just by, just by the way he fell down on that specific play. But again, obviously I'm not a doctor or anything like that. But the most we can do is just, you know, obviously hope for a speedy recovery for him. Hopefully we see him um, at some point here in the season. But... Right now, you know, they got two backup quarterbacks on the roster, that being one, uh, Brody Thompson, uh, Jr., who's listed as a quarterback, slot receiver, and a DB, so he kind of plays everywhere, kind of Swiss Army knife, and then obviously you got the sophomore we're talking about who came into the game as TR got hurt, uh, Anderson Adams, obviously, again, a sophomore. So we'll see who they throw out there. Both of those guys were warming up, throwing to, throwing to each other. So LO does get the ball first to start the second half, so we're going to immediately see who's going to be the man. Um, but obviously, you know, not having TR Hill takes a – takes a dynamic out of your offense that they once had with his yeah. with his rushing ability. Lake Orion had three possessions in the first half. They started at their own 48, their own 22, and Troy's 43. Of those three possessions, it was touchdown, punt, and a field goal. Troy had four possessions. They started at their own 22, their own 20, their own 28, and their last drive was the Lake Orion 45. Their drives were punt, 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 missed field goal. Missed field goal, and frankly. So field position does it, come it, into yeah, play. It's a virgin. For, frankly, you look. Halftime is underwritten by Sarah Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram of Lake Orion, part of the Sarah Automotive family, offering new and used car sales, service on all makes, parts, accessories, and a state-of-the-art collision and repair facility. And I'll finish it after the kick's return. Taking on the five. Got a hole at the 20. Breaks through. Breaks another tackle. Good Vasquez, patience. he's up to the 45-yard line. Good patience from Vasquez. So stop by Sarah's location at 3800 South Lapeer Road or give them a call at 248-393-2222. And Orion Oaks Dental, where the number one priority is to deliver quality care to their patients in a comfortable and convenient setting. Located at 400 West Clarkston Road in Lake Orion, visit their website at www.orionoaksdental.com or give them a call at 248-693-4422. And it looks like they will bring out the junior Brody Thompson in as backup QB for him is for the injured T.R. Hill. So we'll see how this offense functions with, with him at the helm. Brody played some last year, so he's not a stranger. Yeah, Brody's a ju junior, and again, he's listed on the roster as a quarterback, slot receiver, and DB. So I'm assuming he has some sort of athletic ability in him. Ability. Obviously, you know, playing slot receiver, he's got to have some sort of speed on him. So, so you know, that rushing ability for their offense probably won't be taken out too much with T.R. Hill being gone. Jaden Barrero on the run, got a first down out to the Troy 45-yard line. Vasquez splits wide right, Jamari Cooper wide left. Again, up the middle. Looks like the ball Is came out there. Ball came out there at the end, but it looks like you, they're going to mark him down. But we expect to see a lot of this going forward here, at least for this game, especially with the backup quarterback being in being in the game. It's probably going to be a lot of, of ground and pound here because, again, again, we don't know really the throwing ability of Brody Thompson. Trey Pachmara is in at the running back position, and this is mostly to give Brady a chance to get settled in. Exactly. So he's Brady right on here. a run. 
gets about six. Yeah, that, I, I was gonna say, you know, don't really, especially, you know, seeing his rushing ability there, definitely don't expect that kind of rushing attack from QB to go away here. He's definitely faster than what we saw from Anderson Adams on his quick play that he had uh, in the first half. But really, to me, the passing is going to be the question here for Brody Thompson. Jamari Cooper looks like he's got a little hitch yeah, in his get along step. as yep. he splits right. And up again, Pac Trey Pacmara up the middle. Got a first down and more. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's what kind of Coach Bell saying. Now he's just running the ball right up the pipe with both that two headed monster of Pacmara and Barrero. And again, like how you said, trying to get Thompson kind of get, get his feet under him, yep. get him, get him calm down a bit, because you know while he is a junior, and we, and we did see a little bit of him last year. It's still, you know, nerves are there, being thrusted into a game uh, all of a sudden. Say, don't kid yourself. His heart's going exactly. Boom, I'm boom, saying, boom. yeah, no, I know that feeling for him. I know that I know <laughs> that feeling all too well for him. But this is Guerrero. definitely good. Up the middle for five. This is definitely good again. Kind of getting the calm now. I won't be surprised to see maybe some play action off of it as well. Because the play action is how you get your quarterback out in space. Let him see the field. Let him go out there so he doesn't have the defense right on top of him. And there's nothing cute what they're doing. They're exactly. running right up the A gap uh, behind uh, Blackstock. You know, so they're showing in that offensive line. Showing shades of the Detroit Lions. You're just running it right up the gut saying you can't, you can't stop us. Well, yeah, we're go ahead and stop it. it. Exactly. Yeah. Twins left, single wide right, and we have a stoppage in play, and Troy's going to take a timeout. And that's a well-needed timeout for them to get their defensive breather. And the second half scoreboard is underwritten by Cutter Rug Flooring, a local family-owned and operated small business proudly serving Lake Orion and surrounding communities. Fully licensed and insured, they specialize in carpet, carpet restretching, flooring repairs, as well as full service installation and sales. Their mobile showroom brings the shopping experience right to your door for your convenience. Contact them today to schedule your free in-home consultation and measurement at 586-531-3280 or 586 Cutter Rug Flooring Installation.com. So we got second and five, second and six here again. I'm, I'm, I'm expecting, I won't be surprised if Brero ends up kind of sealing this drive here with the TD here on the ground. That's kind of what I'm predicting here. Twins left. Hand off Jamari Cooper. He's down near the 10. Still didn't go down. He, he still didn't go down. He was on his feet out of bounds over there. But So it'll be third down. So you only gained about three on that one, but that was a tough three yards. Yeah. Third down and call it three from the 11-yard line. 8.37 to go here in the third. They're in three. They've been running the ball a lot with Barrero. I'm expecting maybe a little, little option here with Pacmara, or excuse me, uh, with uh, Thompson here and Barrero. England checks in as a wide receiver split right with Vasquez in the slot. That's exactly what they do. They hand off to Barrero instead. Barrero, oh. oh, got tripped up and got a first down near the five. They're going to mark him down at the six. And my prediction was almost right on that one. There was Barrero. If he didn't get shoelace tackled, that would have been a he would have been in the end zone with six points right there for the Dragons. The ball is just outside the six. Yeah, it's like about the six and a half, seven yard line here. Twins right. Barrero again got tripped up. By number two, Jalen Peacock. I'm sorry, he's number one. Oh, got it right. Nope, that was Jackson Barrett. Tripped him up on the last tackle. 
I feel like they should run an option here. That they've been running it with Burrell up the pipe the whole drive and Pacmara as well. And I feel like the defense is starting to bite, but looks like they're under center here. Tight formation for the Dragons. Vasquez takes the handoff, cuts it up. Inside the five to the two. Yeah, looks like they run that quick hitting jet sweep right there with Vasquez. Get, get your speed guys out there on the edge. Get them in space. I like that type of philosophy. Yeah. And he did, he did a good job of, you know, putting his foot in the ground, especially knowing that he only had so many yards to get to the end zone. Only gained about three or four in that one, but nonetheless, you know, it could set up the offense here for a possible fourth down play if they don't get it here on third down. Third and goal from the two. Again, I'm feeling the option here. This is what you need to pull out. Yep, there it is. It's Thompson. Keeps it himself. Touchdown Lake Orion Dragons. And Brody Thompson from two yards out. Again, that gets how you get is how do you get the backup quarterback going right there. And it was again, I was calling for the option the whole drive because they kept running right up the pipe and and Thompson did a good job of keeping that ball himself and he just kind of followed exactly where the halfback would have went if he were to hand it off, and that was right up the middle. And again, it looks like Jamari yeah, Cooper Jamari's and a little Gippy getting off the field. Yeah. He looks to be, you know, he's not being tended to right now, so I'm probably just a little tweak, maybe on, maybe on his ankle or something like that. But 51 yards in 10 plays. Two-yard run by Brody Thompson. So I don't recall him scoring last year. That may be his first touchdown. It couldn't come at a bit better time for Lake Orion. And unlike college and the pros, you don't get to keep the ball. And Landon Morris just got called for taunting. They'll apply that on the kickoff. And that's one of the things, I know it's early, but you got to keep your head right. about you. Yep. Will Hoffman on for the extra point. Ball's down, kick is up, and the kick is good. Good job by Vasquez. Jackson Vasquez to get that ball down. That yeah. was a low snap. Yeah, the first, uh, the first PAT. Vasquez, uh, he couldn't couldn't handle the snap. It was a good snap on yep. the first one, but that one, it was a low snap. Got a handle of it, though, and so we get it down for Hoffman to put it through the uprights. So 6.24 to go here in the third quarter. Dragons increase their lead to 16 to nothing. A replay of that touchdown. And that, yeah, again, Thompson was supposed to be, it was an option player there. He could have handed it off to Barrero, but he said to keep it himself. And instead of, you know, he's really supposed to take that kind of towards the edge, but he saw that the defender was sitting there, so he just said, all right, I'll just follow yeah. the, the guy I sort of hand the ball off to. So it technically it wasn't the right read, but it still worked out for him because we only need two, two yards at that point as long as you just kind of follow where the blocking's supposed to go. You know, that's, that's it, how it works out for you. For as nervous as he may have been when he started that drive, he, kind of he was it, yeah. cool as a cucumber yeah. by the time he scored. Yeah, and that, and that's what the coaching staff always teaches too. If, if you're doing the one play and for some reason it breaks down or you don't read the play the right way, just go to where you know the blocking is supposed to be at. Something's, yeah. something's going to be open. That's exactly what he did on that one. Will Hoffman will kick off. Jackson Peacock is one of the deep men. Taken and dropped on the 30-yard line. Malik Pulford on the tackle and Brady Harden brought him down. That time the kicking team was able to get in there. Ball spotted on the 31 where Troy will take over first and 10. And Troy's got one thing, one mission in mind. That's get some points Just get on, the up on the board. I mean, frankly, should have three if it wasn't for the debacle they had yep. to end the first half, which, again, obviously, you know, a 30-yarder is not a gimme by any means when it comes to high school sports. But we saw this young man kick. He had the leg oh, to yeah. make it. Oh, yeah, definitely had the leg for it. It's just a matter. Mm -hmm. He just... Hit it wrong, and when you're out there for so long, so many trial and errors. 
So Ori from the gun. He's coming around the right side, breaks a couple oh, tackles. Shifty. Gets a first down over the 40 to the 42. Yeah, he's a bigger guy, but he was following his blocks. Very patient right there. Just kind of sidestepped his way up the field. Never really hit full speed, but again, followed his blocks, was patient with it, and was able to kind of shimmy his way for a first down. So solid first down play for Troy. Something that they've had success with. They're, they're getting the yards. They're moving the ball. It's just a matter of being able to finish their drives. It's really been the issue for them. Lane Garris on the tackle for the Dragons, and Malachi Hood has checked in at one of the defensive line positions. Taken on the right side. Mm. Looks like we got a flag. Looks like yeah. it'd be from holding. Everybody, in the, everybody on this side said it was saying holding. J.P. Makarowitz on the carry. We'll check the call out with referee Wally Rose. Holding on the offense, so this one's coming back. And when you're in Troy's position, that's exactly what you cannot have. Yeah. You cannot have, after a really good first down play, that very next one, you have a holding call. Knocks you back, Grant. They, again, they have had success throwing the ball here, and it's something that they're probably going to have to start doing here as we get later into this game. Time's of the I mean, we're already under halfway to go in this third quarter here, so time is of the essence for the Colts. They're backed up to their own 30-yard line. It'll be first and 23 for Troy. Oh, we got a timeout here. Looks like a referee timeout. Looks like they're confirming yeah. about something right, right, right over the ball, maybe where they're supposed to be spotted at. Yep, they're going to bring it back up. Maybe they're going to re-spot it. Maybe they weren't in the right spot. No, I think they're going back. It's 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Right, and they are now got it on the 40. So it should be on the 30. It should be on the 30 right where it was. I know, I know they have certain steps they like to do, but, I mean, 10 yards is 10 yards no matter how you step it. Yeah, I think what they're trying to figure out is where the ball should be spotted from. Yeah. Let's see. Because it was right at the line of scrimmage. I would say it was right yeah. at the line of scrimmage, so... so. Yeah, now they marked it off from the first down marker, which was the 43. Yeah, it looks like that line. And screen. now they'll mark okay. it on the 33. Hey, let's just get it right. And that's, you know, people complain about the officials, but all they want to do is get it right. Exactly. So first and 20. Look, throws over the middle. So complete a, so got a Troy player down. to Jalen Peacock, and we have a Troy player down. He's holding his left knee on that one. Grabbing his knee. Is that their quarterback? No, it is no? not. It's one, of their, it's one of their linemen. That's right. Yeah, zero's out there. Yeah, he's holding that left knee. So while we have an injury timeout, We remind you to be sure to tune in to replays of your favorite games right here on Orion Neighborhood Television. Tune in Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, and Sundays at 7 p.m. for the most current games in our lineup. Games are also replayed throughout the week, so check our program guide on our webpage at orionontv.org for replay times that best fit your viewing schedule. Also, visit our YouTube link for games on demand, www.orionontv.org. Looks like they're still tending to the injured Troy player. Couldn't see a number on him, but he was holding his left no. knee, so hopefully, hopefully he's okay. Never want to see injuries this early in the season. As we said, we have a beautiful night here tonight. Uh, Lights are in full effect. Flags hanging pretty much limp. I don't know if it's because there's no wind or it's wrapped around the flagpole. It's funny because up here it's windy when we go outside yeah, the booth. We a, yeah, we have a little bit yeah, of a little breeze window there. Yeah. It was good though. It was good. Yeah. And we have our student crews from Lake Orion High School up here assisting the broadcast tonight. 
Our producer, director, Joey Tysick, is down in the van. Injured player That's number 76. is number 76, Mike Holinsky. He's not putting any no, weight, he's on, not putting yeah. any weight on that leg at all. So. We wish him the best. So it's going to be second and 14 for Troy. Yeah, they ran a little RPO action before that injury timeout. It's been kind of their bread and butter all day. And, you know, it got down about six to seven yards. So kind of chipping away at this, at this down and distance here. They need 14 yards. They need to get basically across midfield to get a first down. So. They've had a lot of cassettes throwing the ball between the between the numbers. They already show trips to the left and a single wide right. Yeah, they have they have they have, they, have, they have the guys to do it to yeah. run that passing scheme they want to. They have, they have some athletes out there on the, on the edge. Coach Blackstock having a quick word with Austin Kahn. Pressure. Blocked again. He got hit, and it hit Austin Kahn right on the nine. Exactly, and that's and that's one where if you give Ori some time, that's that's a touchdown because Kahn was beat on that one. It was, it was a double move. Yeah, it was, it was a double move from the receiver out there, and if it wasn't for the pressure of LO, that would have been a touchdown. Most likely, it was Jalen Peacock on the route right there, and he ran a beautiful. Double move. He faked it inside and darted outside. And, and got, if if Khan had turned around, he oh yeah, oh yeah, that, yeah that's he, a he had a clear plat, path up the left sideline. But yeah, something that they teach, especially Coach Blacks, like he says, if you're beat, you know, you try to make up that ground that you are beat. You know, you could possibly run into pass interference if that ball's underthrown. But obviously, when you're beat, you're not thinking to turn around to look for the ball. Third and fourteen. Motion, Ori. Got pressure, looks, throws, incomplete. Again, he threw it low, yeah, it but he had pressure. He Again, yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he had pressure in his face. It wouldn't matter anyway if that ball, or the, at least that route, it was ran about five yards up the field. He was just trying to get the ball out of his hands to avoid a, avoid a sack. And he's done, honestly, a pretty good job of avoiding sacks. I think he's only taken about one sack today, and that was the one where this guy came in unblocked. It wasn't his fault. He didn't have any time to throw the ball. Came in blindside on him. But other than that, Ori's a pretty good job of at least getting the ball out of his hand quick. But nonetheless, sets up fourth and long here for Troy. Another good punt. And over end punt. Vasquez takes it at his 28. Up over the 30, up over the 40, breaks it outside. Got two men to beat. Beats one, and he's out of bounds. Good, good return from Vasquez. Great there. return. He's been the X factor when it comes to the special teams. He's had a lot of good returns today, and that's, you know, that, that can make or break a drive right there, honestly. And Omar Atasi was one of the ones that brought him down. Yeah, that, but yeah, special teams is where you can really make or break a drive or a game, or just, you know, and just really puts the momentum in your favor with that one. And it shoots him out all the way out to plus territory. It looks like the 31, 32 yard line. So, and again, as we get a replay of that, you know, it looked like he may have been kind of tackled right down right there. here. But again, that strength, that lower body strength keeps his feet going. And Broken arm tackle. He threw down the punter, Otasi, and yeah. finally got knocked out of bounds. So, first and 10. It's Thompson. There he goes. Thompson cuts it outside. Oh, what, what a run! By Corian Dragons. What a play by the quarterback, Brody Thompson, from 32 yards out. What a run right there from Brody Thompson, backup quarterback. Hasn't thrown the ball at all today, but he's been doing it with his feet, and that's something that they're probably going to look for him going forward. It's just his running ability. I mean, he plays slot and DB as well, so he, you know, he plays. Positions where you need speed, you need to be athletic, and 
Yes, Coach Bell, the position is secure. Again, obviously we haven't really seen how he's been throwing the ball, but nonetheless, you know, doesn't, you know you'll know, worry about that when, when the time comes when you cross that bridge. Will Hoffman on for the extra point. Vasquez will hold. Ball is down, kick is up. It's pure. It and is. the kick is good. 4.55 to go in the third. Lake Orion 23, Troy nothing. So we get a replay of that run, and this was good. He put his put his hand in the dirt, kept his feet what going, balance. and yeah. fell in the end zone. But it started again. That was a that was a QB keeper on that one. It was a they, it looked like a read option. He read it correctly, and then he was off to the races at that point. Everybody been inside right there for Troy. While we while they're waiting to line up, remind you again: go mobile with ONTV anytime. Follow us on Facebook. X and YouTube on your mobile devices. Connect with ON TV to see what's happening in our studio, see upcoming events, and watch ON TV programs in high definition on demand. ON TV working to bring Lake Orion to the world. You feel this momentum shifting more and more in the favor of LO here after a really good run right there from Brody Thompson. Another boomer here from End over end kick into the end zone. It'll come out to the 20 where Troy will take over first and 10 with 4.55 to go in the third. Now for Troy here, it's, again, it's a matter of, can't look, you can't look at the school, but can't look at how many points are down. Can't oh, look no. at, at the time. It's just finish this drive, execute, finish the drive. Because they have they they have moved the ball pretty decently. They've had a, they had a couple faults here and there, but they haven't completely been completely been silent on offense. It's really been it's really been just a matter of being able to execute every play in and out. And yeah, really consistency has really been what's been holding them back so far tonight. And it was only a 9-0 game at the half. Motion. Probably gonna be a false start and here. And a whistle. Ball start, back them up five, we'll repeat first down. Again, that's also been a problem for them as well, just shooting themselves in the foot, and it just only makes your drive even harder on, you know, on a night where you know, you've been moving the ball okay, you can't afford setbacks like this. It really does, yeah. Jet sweep action for Troy here. They get a couple. Yeah, basically, essentially, no, no, they didn't get the penalty yard back. Still about second and 12. Dragons will travel to Oxford next week for Smurf the annual roar on, 24, roar on M24. Very improved Oxford team this year. Yeah, they are a very improved team. They've, they've started out the year well as well. Yeah, and we will be back after this play. Ori, look, sets up a screen drop just as well it, as it did because he got planted by Trey Pakmara. Orion Neighborhood Television will be streaming the Lake Orion Oxford Junior Varsity game next Thursday night, right here at Dragon Stadium. It's funny seeing, uh, what's his face? Seeing Hensley, he's walking around, has a big club on his left arm, and he's out there, he's still, he's still fighting like a oh, warrior yeah. out there. Has, yeah, he has the, has the neck brace, has the brace and everything, he is. Third and 13, double wide, trips left, twins right on third down. Bad snap. Falls down. And gonna so down. is Ori. Yeah, They're going to mark him down on the three-yard line. Bad snap. It was a low snap. 
And he chased it back, and he really couldn't corral it at first, so he just fell on it. Yeah, the struggles continue for Troy. It, was, yeah, it wasn't the best snap that we're, Oregon can get a. He's trying to initially try to grab the ball to try to make something out of the play, at least avoid what just yeah. happened. And now you back your punter up, who's been taking his sweet time getting the ball out. So now if you're like Oregon. You can't you, do it here. Yeah, if you're like Oregon, you're coming in with your ears pinned back. Trying to see if you can get a block here. And oh, and that's going to be a safety. That's going to be a safety. Aiden. A high snap. Atasi went up to get it. Came down on the white stripe. That's a safety. Dragons get two. And they get they're the going to get the ball back. Yeah, and that's. Uh, and I'm not surprised that snap was high because, again, when you're on your own one, the punter isn't as far back as he usually is when he's out in the open field. So, again, it's not surprising that that snap ended up being high, forced the punter to fall back in his own end zone. We said it time and time and time again. Sometime during the day at practice, you get your long snapper and you get your punter out and you work on that, especially when you're in and the Hunter's got to get the ball off quick. You know, we would take usually on Wednesday or Thursday before practice and run that and run that and run that. Yeah, it's something that, again, it's an, obviously these are high school kids. It's not something that, that a long snapper is thinking about. You're down 23-0, no. and, you know, it's been a rough game. You're just trying to get out there and just do your job, and you don't really think about how the punter is closer to you than he usually is And because, you know, if the punter was at his normal distance, that would have been a good snap. <laughs> but right. the fact that the punter probably shaved off about five yards from where he usually is. It just happens. So this will be a free kick. They have the option of punting or putting a ball on the tee. They've elected to tee it up. England is back deep along, I believe, with Vasquez. Vasquez. Yep. High kick taken by Vasquez on the 30. Coming up, cuts it outside at the 40 and dragged down by an arm. Good tackle up there by Troy's number eight, Ryan Christensen. Good tackle yeah. up there. Good job to hold on. Although I noticed his hand did get up toward yeah. the collar of the shirt. Yep. Here we go. This is where you can, again, Dame's not over yet. Still got three and a half, or about 3.50 to go here in the third quarter. But this is the drive where you can kind of Kind of put the dagger in them, I would think. If you, can, if you can go up by, it would be if they make the, assuming they make the PAT, it'd be, you know, 32 to zero. And you're getting close to that threshold to where that clock starts to run no matter what. If you get up by at least 35 points, so. Jamari Cooper is being a trooper tonight. He's hurting out there and he's not missing a snap. So they get a new face in the ball game, a halfback right there. Dom Diego Hawkins, number two on the carry. So we get a replay of this here. They right get up a, the middle. Yeah, another one of those option plays. And doesn't even have a name plate on his back, but at least he's, he's out there. They're getting him some playing and time here. And he's carrying four Troy players with him. Exactly. You know, that's... It's good to see that. Here. What a debut for Dom Diego. Expect to see a little bit more of the backups coming in here as we get later in this game. Assuming nothing drastic happens. Here goes Thompson again. Thompson again on the carry. He's got a first down over the 35 to the 34. Again, he's definitely a tough kid, but good to get. And quick. he's quick. Yeah, yeah, he's quick too. There's he, not much of a drop off with. With him and TR, he's yeah, shown yeah. some speed. So, yeah, I think TR might be a little bit more agile, but he de but, yeah. but Thompson definitely has the speed. I mean, they, he he got up to speed quick on that run and on his touchdown run as well. He got a, he has very good acceleration, yeah, exactly, and very good top speed as well. Might not be the the best going east and west, but going north and south, he is yeah he is extremely fast. Sam Barkley checks in at the tight end position. Trips to the left. And so they ran to Hawkins again right there. Yeah, Hawkins got a couple. Hawkins comes out for a breather. And he's only a junior too, so he has some, yeah. Uh, yeah. Vasquez and Pacmara.
trips to the left. On second down. Complete over the middle to Kyle England. Yeah, that was a tunnel screen out there. They, they ran it to, or excuse me, they ran to England. We get a re, as we get a replay of this, it was an RPO. And the first throw we see from Thompson, it was a tunnel screen, good blocking from Vasquez out there. Yep. And England, again, using his speed out there, using his, his athletic ability. And, and it was a safe throw Exactly, for safe throw. That again, that's how you kind of build up confidence, especially throwing the ball. You start off with something short, start off with something simple. It was a simple, again, an, an RPO, a, a run pass option. He picked the pass option and threw a dart out there on the tunnel screen. And so they got Pacmara in the game here at halfback. From the gun, Hoffman, Pacmara, Hoffman on the keeper, there. runs around, touchdown Lake Orion Dragons. That is Great play fake. Three touchdowns on the day for the backup QB. That is, uh, it's definitely an interesting stat line when you're going to check it at the How end of the night. How about that? When, th when things theme seem kind of, seem kind of, some kind of rough for the Dragons with the injury to T.R. Hill. Thompson steps up and fills that role exactly the way he needs to. And again, if it's not broke, don't fit, fit, fix it to keep the ball on the ground. Now that'll probably be something we'll be talking to Coach Bell about in the post game. Post game, yeah, especially how they're, how they're going to manage that going forward. Because obviously, you know, we kind of knew this was going to be the outcome of this game going in. But next week up, they got Oxford. So in you know, Oxford, you know they're going to look at this tape and look at what they can. Will Hoffman on for the extra point. Vasquez holding. Falls down. Kick is up. That was a rocket. And the kick is good. 129 to go in the third. It's now 32 to nothing again, for getting, the Dragons. Again, they're getting close to that threshold to where the clock runs no matter what. Yeah, that'll be at 30, 35, 35 points. Yeah. Three points away. Thanks to Orion Neighborhood Television and Dragon Broadcasting, you can watch Lake Orion High School sports live online all year. We've got a full schedule of varsity football, volleyball, and more this fall, plus concerts and ceremonies. It costs less than $12 per month to watch sporting events, and half of that money goes back to the LOHS program. Be sure to designate Lake Orion High School when you set up your account. Get started at www.dragonbroadcasting.org. Orion Neighborhood Television thanks our student crews for their hard work and dedication to bring Dragon Sports to the world. And that includes our great crew up with us tonight and down in the booth with Joey Tysick. Ball's bobbled. Oh, oh, my goodness. That was a he never play. had the handle on it. Kept trying to secure it. That was number 12, Joe Yanklow. Yeah, he, he it was it was a rocket from Hoffman. It was it was it was Yeldo, I'm sorry. It wasn't a high kick, it was a line drive, but it had some velocity on it, and then kind of forced him to bobble. He's trying to catch it on the run, and he bobbled it, and he just yeah, he just never could you get a clean just, hold on it. And if that just fall on it. So Troy stout starts out first and 10 from their own 17-yard line with a minute 23 to go. Handoff off the left side for a couple. Teddy Moore, number 34 on the carry. Will Hoffman on the stop for the Dragons. It'll bring, bring up second and eight. Where we're getting some substitutions here and there for this dragon yeah. defense. You'll, you'll, you'll slowly start seeing guys trickle their way in as we get closer to the end of this game. And you know what? It's early in the season, but that's great. We've talked about it for years. Get those kids some experience so the game's not new to them. Handoff up the middle. More on the carry. Yeah, the, yeah the, later, later we get in, in in the year, the more that rotation starts to condense down. So as you said, it's important to get guys as much playing time as you can early in, in, in the year, especially in these non-league games where you know you're probably going to 
roll over your opponent, especially in a game like this, it's key to get every to get guys reps here so they can get used to that t type of game speed. But it looks like that will be the last play that of the was, third quarter. That was number 24, Teddy Moore, a 5'8", 170 sophomore. So he'll be around for a couple, and we've played three. The score at the end of the third, the Lake Orion Dragons, 32. The Troy Colts, nothing. We'll remind you again, filmmakers, be ready. The Wildwood Film Festival will be kicking off on Thursday, October 17th at the ONTV studio located at 1349 Joslin Road. Teams will be given their requirements, which include a prop, location, and a line of dialogue that is to be included in their 10-minute film. You will have until 6 p.m. on Tuesday, October 22nd, to submit the film. On Wednesday, the 23rd, the films will be viewed and judged at 7 p.m. at Oxford 7 Cinema in Oxford. Open to all ages, it costs $30 per team to enter, and the winners will receive a cash prize. To register, go to www.orientontv.org. Pass out on the flat, and that goes nowhere. Yeah, Maybe a yard. And that was an interesting play call. Third and three, they yeah. essentially run a backwards pass right there, and so you're going to lose some yards. So it's going to be fourth down and about seven, or call it eight. Yeah, they lost about five yards on yeah. that screenplay out there, and now they're gonna, probably going to be, I'm assuming they're going to be punting the ball away. They're going to punt, yeah. Atasi's out there. Vasquez is out to receive. Troy cannot get their, their yeah, line set. Yeah, they guy out there, and I think they took a Yeah, took they're going to take a time out. The coach is over in the booth next to us for saying if you can't get it right, call a time out. That's really been, that kind of sums up the night for Troy right there. This, this failure to execute has really been the little things for him that has tripped them up, whether it's penalties or just, you know, stuff like that. Just not getting the right guys out there in time. You're forced to take a timeout. Granted, I get it. It's 32-0. You know, the game is all but over. But, you know, you still want to finish out on a high note. But you just see kind of just the body language from the guys over there. They're definitely yeah. – it, it's hard, it's rough, especially when you start off 2-0 with two very good wins. You know, they won by yeah. 35 points in each of those games. So, you know – Come, come in here, you're feeling good, and then you get, you know, 35 owed yourself. There is a huge difference between the blue division and the red division. Yeah. Not to demean what Troy's done today, because mm -hmm. they played hard. They did, you know, move the ball in the first half, but they're finding out. Exactly. You know, in sheer numbers. Exactly. So Atasi in punt formation, good snap. Uh, should have, that should have been blocked. It may have been. Vasquez picks it up on the fly. Oh, dodges a couple tackles. Still on his feet. Down inside the 25 to the 23. He's a confident returner. I mean, he that's that's one where I, myself, I, I would have went to go and turn that. You're right in the middle of everybody. You, you can get hit at any moment, and he just runs in, catches it on the run. Yep. And that's why they got him back there. I mean, return is not easy. It is. No, it's not. It, 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 you know, it You've got to, number one, watch the ball. Number two, look to see where the ball is. Do you call for a fair catch? Do you catch it? And then secure the ball. And look at that. And then and look down. It. Yeah, exactly. follow down. your blocking. Exactly. And now so like, Thompson brings them out. Uh, no, it looks like it's actually Anderson oh, Adams yep, out there. Anderson Adams is in. Hand off up the middle. So he played for he, a couple. He played one play when T.R. Hill went out. Yep. I think they just needed a body. I don't think. Uh, yep. I don't think Thompson was in the area when they needed a backup QB out there, and so Adams went out there and he got sacked in the play, but it didn't matter because there was there was a penalty on that play. But and, and Thompson proved a lot tonight. 
He did. Uh, let's, he did. let's check out the flag. there without a mouthpiece. Somebody didn't put a mouthpiece on and that is going to drive Coach Bell absolutely nuts. Yeah, Coach Bell's trying to find a number who on who it, it yeah. is because they don't want to get caught for it again. Well, not only that, I mean yeah, and now it's something it. you've been, you do since Little League football. Exactly. And now I call the timeout to he, try to see who, who it is. If yeah. they can get him a spare one if he doesn't have one. That's why they always have you wrap your uh, mouth guard on the face mask so you don't lose it. Yep. So we try to see who it is, but we can't really see. But What a crowd we have here tonight. I went out at halftime looking around, and, of course, they, they recognized all the youth football programs and the middle school and junior high school programs you know, in the district, and there are a lot of people here tonight. Oh, yeah. So the, the home opener, everybody kind of knows. Probably be a rollover game, but, you know, yeah, the first home opener is always a good one. Noah Thebo is in at a slot receiver position. I'll try to keep up with the changes that have been made. Adams, complete. Down to the 20, down to the 18, goes A.J. Katanichi. Katanichi. Yeah. Sophomore to sophomore on that one. That might, be something that, that might be something that we'll be seeing. Keep an eye on that. Yeah, but yeah no. Um, yeah, just for Anderson Adams, this is kind of one of those things where. Wholesale changes. Go, Joey Nearing goes out to a wide receiver position. Number 14, Dominic Lawless in on the left slot. Handoff up the middle. Dom Diego Hawkins. On his first carry, he made it look easy. He did make it look easy, yeah. You know, Adam's got a couple. It's going to be third down, and they're going to call it four. Yeah, Adam is kind of in the same position that T.R. Hill was, you know, a sophomore playing up on yep. varsity. So these are, you know, while, while, while you're up 32-0, these are key reps. You know, this, is, this, yeah. is, this is where, again, you get, kind of get accustomed to playing varsity and you get accustomed to, you know, getting reps and playing that game speed. With every snap, the game's going to slow down. Exactly. Them. Third down and four. Handoff to Noah number Thiebaud. 18, yeah. Noah Thebo. He got, he got smacked he on got, that one. He got down to within one. Micah Gaspar checks in. On fourth down, the Dragons will go for it. Looks more like one and a half. That's a that's an awful long yard yeah, over there. Yeah, it's more like fourth side. and two, it looks like. Trips to the right. Adams looks incomplete. Uh, yeah, he kind of threw that in between yeah. two of his guys on that one. He got that ball off, though, because there was a guy r r running free on his blind side. But he was, he was, so the Dragons turn it over on downs. 8-14 to go in the game. The Dragons are up by 32. And during this sports season, ONTV will be covering a large variety of games. Our sports coverage will include varsity football, JV football, volleyball, boys soccer, and more. Select games will be streamed live on dragonbroadcasting.org and will be replayed on our channel, Comcast Channel 10 and AT&T 99. Visit orientontv.org for our program schedule. Handoff. Ori has gone the distance at quarterback. He has. I'm not sure. Ryan Carruthers on the carry. Yeah, they don't have the positions listed on the roster, so I don't know no. who their uh, I don't know who their backup quarterback would be. 
Mason going on the tackle for the Dragons from his defensive tackle position. It is second down and eight, and the clock continues to run. Two backs either side of Ori. Handoff coming around this side, the far side, so we got a flag down over is there number seven, two Ryan flags. Carruthers, yeah. and a flag down. Yeah, we had two, and there's one that was during the play, and then we have one that came after the play from the back judge. We'll check referee Wally Rose in his call. He's been a busy guy tonight. Yeah, he he's been calling out a lot. I like, I like how the high school sports, they have the mic now. You can hear him. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, it looks like they had two. So, no harm, no foul. Yeah. Use the penalty to offset if they're both. Because you have live flags and you have dead ball flags. If they're, yep. if they're both in the same category of live and or dead, usually they offset. You only get that type of change and, you know, you take the difference from the two. If one is like a dead ball foul and then the other one is a, is a live ball foul. So, because both of those were during the play, they Second offset. Down Second down and eight. Akili Rush in at a safety position for the Dragons. Handoff up the middle. Carried by Carruthers and Matt Nearing on the tackle. It's third and three. Tazar Jackson is in at a Defensive tackle position. Like I say, we're going to try to keep up with all the changes. Hand off. Little hole off the left side. Gain for, might be enough for a first down. It's going to be close. Finley on the tackle for the Dragons. It is fourth down. He did not get enough for that one. Nope, not enough. Fourth and a half. Play clock down to 15. He didn't get it. He did not get it. No. He even, I think he made Carruthers on the little. carry. Unless maybe he did get it. Unless. No, they're. Oh, they marked. It didn't look like he got there. They called okay, it first wow. down. It, based on what happened in the backfield, it didn't look like he got yeah. there, but. Explains why Ori he was motioning for a first down. It didn't look like he got anywhere close to that, but. Would you expect him to do anything less? I was, exactly. That's why I didn't really pay much attention to it. I was like, yeah, it's what he's supposed to be doing. He's you know, trying to make sure they get the first down. So. so first and 10 for Troy from their own 25. And that run goes nowhere. Carruthers again. Another mass of Sam Barkley on the stop. And the benches are clearly Lake Orion's emptying the bench. It's funny seeing everybody. Full scale replacements. It's funny seeing everybody run in and out like that. Donovan Finley is in at a safety position. Second and nine. Oh, Ori, Ori oh. on the keeper, and he got a couple. No, it was a new oh. quarterback. No, okay. New quarterback. It was, uh, that sends us all scrambling. Oh, it's his, for, it's his brother. Cool, Ori. The younger yeah. brother. 
Cole. Sophomore, yeah, sophomore. Yep. That sent us scrambling for yeah, us. It did. Our yeah. It looked weird back there. I'm like, I saw the zero, but I didn't see the two. And I, as soon as we heard number 20 from the from the PA, yeah, we immediately looked back in our. So Ori our replaces Ori with four minutes to go. So they're trying to just run as much clock as they can. They're trying to just get out of here, just mm -hmm. avoid injury. Just get your guys the playing time they need. Two but wide outs, two backs in the backfield alongside Ori. They were going to have a timeout, though, because they couldn't get the play call in time. Yep, yep. that's our third timeout of the game. Coach Frazier over there still harping on attention to detail there. He's still, you know, drawing as players as he should, you know. So if you're down 32-0, you gotta got to play at the end. Yeah. We will remind you once more about Community Media Day. Orion Neighborhood Television will be celebrating Community Media Day on October 21st. Community, Community Media Day is an annual celebration of voices that bring awareness to the importance of free speech and accessible media for all individuals to have their voices heard. Orion Neighborhood Television is inviting anyone to our open house from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. with snacks and refreshments to see what we have to offer the community. We're also inviting nonprofit organizations to record a quick PSA if they would like throughout the day from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Pass down the right side incomplete. Over, overshot James Belton. I'll tell you what, if Troy could have made this roster any smaller. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, <laughs> it's, 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 you know, it's all on one page. It's not like yeah. LOs that's on separate pages, but yeah, no, the, that text is small. It's a, when you're trying to scramble to find a name, it is, yeah, you got to pinpoint that. So fourth down, Dragons are going to, or the Colts are going to punt. High punt. Vasquez calls for a fair catch at his own 47-yard line with 3.36 to go. And I don't think you're going to see the ball in the air. Yeah, I highly doubt it. Maybe you might see a little play action, but that's the most that's I don't think we're going to see a full-blown passing attack here. No. So we will be back in two weeks against, I believe it's Rochester will be playing that night. Adams, thank you. Joey Tysick said it'll be Rochester Adams. A little mix up in the backfield. Yeah, that was a that was an option play. Adams could have kept that or handed it off, and he was trying to keep it, but the right back just yeah. said, No, I'm taking it. He looks like a, that was Damian Shope yeah. on the handoff, and he wanted to get the ball. Hey, he's and a senior. And Anderson yeah. was saying, No, I don't yeah. want to give it up. Yeah. Hey, he's a senior at Shope, that being he's, he's like, No, I'm, I'm, this might be the last time I touch the ball. I'm, I'm trying to. I'm trying to keep this, so I don't blame him for trying to keep it on but that one. But they picked up four out of it, so it's second and six as we go inside three minutes. They only do pass. Adams up the middle, met at the 45-yard line and dropped. Looked like uh, Ori, Cole Ori was in on the tackle and Flores. Yeah, Adams, yeah, he looked to pass that quick, couldn't find his first read, and immediately tucked that down and ran. Not the fast, and definitely not as fast as T.R. Hill or no. Thompson, but he's bigger than both of them. And yes, yeah. he is. He's a good-sized quarterback. Yeah. Third and two. First down and more. Handoff, number 26, James Bambard, the fourth. Well, and... and between him and Braden Blackstock, there's a lot that makes Ooh, an old yeah. coach feel real old. <laughs> there's no, that's, that's because James Banbard the third graduated with my daughter. Okay. No, well, it's good to see. You know, it's good to see sophomores. A lot of them up here getting some playing time. Yes, and. 
Coach Bell said he had a couple sophomores that they asked to go back to the JV just to get them playing time. Exactly, yeah. That's really the thing is, is when you get called, it looks like they're in the victory formation. Yep. So they'll nail it down. But yeah, no, when it, when it comes to, you know, bringing guys up from JV, you know, there's, you know, for the extra JV player themselves, there's a little bit that goes into that. It's like, you know, really depends on how much playing time that you're going to get up at the varsity level. Are you, you know, do you want to take the playing time and play at JV or do you want to play up at varsity and possibly, nice. you know, and possibly not play as much as you expect? Because to? by and large, when you come up, when you come up to the varsity, you are going to be on scout team. Exactly, you are the back of the line. Unless, yes. you're, just, unless you're just that it factor. Uh, yeah, it's correct. You're most likely going to be sitting at the at the back of the line. Obviously, it's a very good gesture if you do get asked to come up to play varsity. But again, you have to kind of, you know, you have to take into account what exactly Adams you want. takes a knee. So I have to probably snap it one more time, I believe. And we'll have to snap one more time. Oh, they held off starting the clock. They will not have to snap it again. But the, looks like we just got word from the PA that uh, Clarkson is up on Oxford 23-15 right yeah. now. So if that score stands, Oxford will drop that game before they yeah. play us next week. So. so the Dragons increase their record to 3-0 as they defeat the Troy Colts on a beautiful Friday night, 32 to nothing. You're watching exclusive coverage of Lake Orion Dragon football here on Orion Neighborhood Television and the NFHS streaming service. We'll be right back. Back here on the field after a 32 to nothing victory by the Lake Orion Dragons over the Troy Colts. And Kev, early in the game, Troy looked like they were going to mount consistent offensive pressure. It just didn't happen in the second half. Exactly, yeah, no, their, their offense looked good at first. They were moving the ball down the field. They just, you know, their passing attack looked to be kind of good at first. And then the Dragons kind of, they settled in, home, home opener, maybe had the jitterbugs a bit but they got it going and then you know they didn't put up you know obviously didn't put up any points so yeah. for the first time in forever as long as i've been around this program or not too often the dragons used three quarterbacks tonight yeah yeah and obviously you know it came down to tierra hill being injured obviously we don't want to see that happen but everybody else they stepped up so and they all played well exactly yeah, yeah that yeah mm -hmm. I, I liked what i saw from brody thompson a lot you know you get stuck in the game you don't expect to play but they didn't miss a beat. Obviously, it's Troy, you know, so they have Oxford up next week. We'll see how Brody Thompson plays in that if Tierra Hill can't go. So it's, it's really unfair to try to compare the running game tonight with what we saw last year because exactly. Billy Roberson was a once-in-a-generational talent. Exactly. But the Dragons ran the ball well tonight. Exactly, and that was the question going in, how would they kind of replace the guys that they lost? But that rushing attack kind of by committee, and it looked good. It looked really good. Just looking to see if Coach Bell is going to wind his way over here. You know, there everybody wants a piece of his time, but we'll get him over here soon. Exactly. Uh, so next week... They go to Oxford, yeah. and we mentioned earlier, Oxford's improved. 
anything can happen exactly. on the war on 24. Exactly, rivalry game, you're on the road, you're in a tough environment there on the Smurf turf. So again, anything else, Oxford, you know, I think they lost tonight if that score still stands over uh, with their game with Clarkson, but nonetheless, it's gonna be, you know, they're gonna bring their A game, you know, yeah. it's gonna be a dogfight. To single out a couple performances tonight, you know, we talked about the quarterbacks, I thought the running backs played very well, but that defensive Defense secondary, you know, they were a little hesitant in the beginning, gave up some plays, but boy, they locked down. Yeah, the defensive look, look kind of shaky at first when it came through the air, but after they get after they got kind of settled in, they really started to take take control of that game on the defensive side of of, of the ball. I'm really impressed with that D, D line, though. Yeah. Again, I I don't even see Coach Bell yeah, over there, so yeah, he lost somewhere yeah. in that somewhere in that match. So yeah. and. We saw a lot from the young guys today. Exactly, yeah. You know, they, they have a lot of seniors on this roster. They, but the juniors and the sophomores really played well. Here comes Coach Bell. Uh, uh, Coach, congratulations on the win. Thank you. First thing, what have you heard about TR? Well, he's, he's getting evaluated. Um, you know, shoulder injury, non-throwing shoulder. Uh, you know, he's in a lot of pain. But we're going to hope for the best, and then we'll see. We'll go from there. Your other two quarterbacks played really well tonight. They're good. We got good quarterbacks. You know, and, and they both have different skill sets. Um, so we're in good hands. You know, our offense obviously TR is a game changer. You know, he's special. But our offense doesn't change much with those two guys. They can both throw it. They can both run it. You know, our offensive line took over in the second half, so we, we have weapons and we feel good. Your defensive backfield looked shaky to start the game. They gave they, us some plays, but yeah. they locked it down in the second half. Second half they did, and I credit to, to Russ Purdy. He made some adjustments with our coverage, brought a little more pressure, and they got good athletes. They got a good quarterback, and you know, and uh, they were taking advantage of some of the things that we do in our coverage and, and uh, you know, our defense adjusted, which is important. Oxford next week. What else can we say? You know, that's that's Michigan, Ohio State. You know, that's uh, that's you know, that's everything. You know, it's it's going to be a huge game, a great atmosphere. They've got a really good team. Um, it's it's going to be a, a tough one. Congratulations on the win tonight. Thanks, See you Doc. next week. Thanks, guys. All right. So that'll wrap it up from the field for Kevin McCormick, our producer director Joey Tysick. Joe Johnson giving us the great sideline shots. I'm Doug Corliss. Thank you for watching. Good night, everyone.